Welcome to the NBA's Greatest Games. Today, we'll take you back into NBA history and relive one of the great matchups as it happened. It is always a glorious scene here at Chicago Stadium when the starting lineups are introduced. And here is the public address voice of the Bulls, Ray Clay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Chicago Bulls welcome the world's greatest fans to the Chicago Stadium. Tonight's game one of the NBA Finals is between the Portland Trail Blazers and your Chicago Bulls. And now for tonight's lineups. First for the visiting Portland Trail Blazers. At forward from Maryland, 6'8", Buck Williams. Jerome Kersey. At center, a double O from Eastern Illinois, Kevin Zuckwer. At one guard from Wisconsin, Stevens Point, 6'3", Jerry Porter. At the other guard, 6'7", from Houston, Clyde Drexler. The Portland Trail Blazers are coached by a unique experience here in Chicago with the lineups introduced. Now let's go to the man who will be handling the sidelines throughout the NBA final, Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad? All right, thanks, Marv. Just an update on that bad wrist that Michael Jordan had, which caused him to shoot so badly in game six against Cleveland. The wrist is fine. As you know, he has an everyday weightlifting routine that he does even on game day. And we were lifting weights this morning, and I witnessed him, I witnessed him pick up 265 pounds, showing that the wrist is fine. Craig Hodges, who also sat out game six with a bad ankle, is available to play. And, Marv, did I mention that I also had a PR of 210 pounds? Thank you. Marv? We were lifting weights. Well, I know I speak for uh, the czar and magic in saying that we'll be enthusiastically charting Ahmad's daily lifting totals. Well, he is probably Michael Jordan's spot man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the officials, Jake Odato, Hugh Hollins, and Dick Bavetta. The Chicago Bulls rolled through the regular season, winning 67, losing 15, best record in the NBA. And then in the playoffs, swept Miami three in a row. We're taken through a grueling seven-game set by the New York Knicks and did not have an easy time with Cleveland beating the Cavaliers in six, while Portland won 57, lost 25 during the regular season, tied with Cleveland for the second-best record behind Chicago. In the playoffs, beat the Lakers three games to one, beat the Phoenix Suns four games to one, and took Utah four games to two. We are 
are set for the opening tip. Bill Cartwright steps in to go against Jerome Kersey, and it's controlled. Well, deflected out. And it will be Portland ball, last touched by Chicago. Terry Porter being played by John Paxson. And the matchup at the start, Michael Jordan facing Clyde Drexler. Kevin Duckworth going at Bill Cartwright. Nice fake, yes, and it counts. I would think for Duckworth to start off the basketball game and get the first basket for his team, the first hoop of this championship series, it's got to be a tremendous confidence builder for this young man, particularly a young man who has received his share of criticism this past season. I think you can look for both teams to go inside early. The game won't be as fast in the probably in the first half as it, as it will in the second half. So look for both teams to go inside. A foul committed by Cartwright Duckworth, a local product out of Harvey, Illinois, who had to garner up a host of tickets for tonight's game, giving Portland a 3-0 lead. Cartwright and a good box out by Percy. Here comes Drexler. Yes, and it counts. The foul called on Pippen. Long outlet passes that pitch ahead to Drexler and Curse in the open floor. One of the trademarks of this Trailblazer team, Clyde with a tremendous ability to keep his concentration and convert even though the foul takes place. One thing the fans are going to have to look for here is the fact that in the last two series, Michael didn't have to play defense. In this series, he will have to play defense all the time. And what happened that time, Michael went to the offensive boards last time down, got caught underneath the results, Drexler ran out. Jordan spotting Pepper. Portland five and Chicago two. Drexler, a line drive jump shot with Jordan. Oh. Some of the great ones have the ability to elevate and then see the entire floor. Michael Jordan draws three people and then finds Pippen underneath. Now Pippen posting up. Cartwright blocked by Drexler. Porter with that change of pace dribble was hit by Paxson. the Bulls have collected three team fouls. This a non-shooting foul. Phil Jackson wants to not happy about what he has seen here at the start with a minute and a half gone by. We discussed at the start of the telecast the rap put forth by Phil Jackson that the Trailblazers self-destruct in close games down the stretch. I asked Rick Adelman of the Blazers, will he use those comments to motivate his team? I don't think I have to. I don't think our players forget what's been said. And uh, But we haven't talked about it a lot. We've talked about just doing our talking on the floor. We're going to go out and play. Uh, we've, we have nothing to apologize for to anybody. I don't care who they are. We, we've won, I don't know what, 70% of our games over three years. We've won 80% of our playoff series. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, that just doesn't hold water. If that's the case, then there's an awful lot of teams that are really struggling in this league. All right, off the steal. Paxson finding Jordan, shooting the three. The save by Cartwright, and Grant was fouled. Called on Percy. Well, Marv, talking about what Co Coach Adelman just talked about, Yes, it's out there, and it is in the back of their mind. I think in game six of the Utah series, they needed to win that game in a close game to say, okay, we can win close games. Mike Cartwright setting up on Duckworth, and he drew the foul. 
Kevin Duckworth call for his first. And Bill Cartwright, who has had a dreadful time of it at the free throw line, will shoot a pair. Bill Cartwright, when he first entered the NBA with the New York Knicks, was a very solid free throw shooter. In recent years with the Bulls, he's dropped off. And it has reached the point magic seven for 19 36 percent from the line for Cartwright during the playoffs. But, but you know why Marv, when he was with New York they went to him a lot. He got to the foul line a lot and he got a chance to get in a groove and in a rhythm. Now the Bulls do not go to him. He don't get to the line a lot and his, and his free throw percentage falls off because of that. Well he's just helped his percentage immensely by hitting Two out of two. Here's pressure by Chicago. We saw very little pressure in the previous series against Cleveland. No, and this is exactly what they want. They had Buck Williams and Kersey backhand on the ball near the half court line. And Terry Porter, who has been on fire during the playoffs, able to convert. Blazers nine, Bulls four. And that's a good sign for Terry Porter because in the two games this season against Chicago, he was shooting just over 31% against the Bulls. I go Jordan. Portland nine, Chicago six. Drexler getting down. He had to save it. But Williams. Now Drexler fouls. Jordan at the offensive end of the floor, the ability to hang just long enough to get that good look at the front of the rim. Tremendous concentration by Michael. But Clyde Drexler said that's what they want. They want to force Michael to the middle, to the help. They accomplished that, but Michael still scored. And then you saw the quick, long pass back, trying to get a score in transition. I talked to Paxson before the game. I said, do you want to run up and down with these guys? He looked at me like I was crazy. No way, he said. We have to be selective when we run against this team. Buck Williams called for a second. He's replaced by Cliff Robinson. Shot clock at five. Here's Jordan. Hardway gets to it again. Lost the dribble off his foot. Three on two for the Blazers. Drexler all the way. Clyde Drexler at his best in the open floor, hitting for his third field goal. He has six, and Portland with an 11-6 advantage. Marv, nobody better leave their TV set because it's going to be some great plays in this series. A live promo offered up here by by Magic. Well, he's not lying because when you get a guy who can take it at 6-7, lead the break, and then just decide to finish it over the top of everyone, man tells the truth. <laughs> Woo. Portland has hit its first five from the field. Another substitution for the Blazers. Mark Bryant, four-year man from Seton Hall, replacing Kevin Duckworth, who has picked up two fouls. So two apiece on Duckworth. And Williams. Cartwright being played by Brandt. Jordan shooting the three. And Porter starts back. Drexler making contact with Paxson. Crowd looking for a foul. And it was knocked out of bounds by the Trailblazer. And, and Clyde Drexler caught Paxson on his back in the lane in transition. Just posted him up, looked for the long lead pass, just lost control. Look from Pepper, pretty pass from Grant, and Cartwright was fouled. Once again, Cartwright to the line, Porter called for the foul. Not many big people are willing to be interior passes, but this Bulls team plays so unselfishly. They're always looking for each other, and the key thing is they know where they are supposed to be on the floor. They find their teammates because they're in the right spots. That's execution. And you can tell that what we were talking about earlier. Both teams want to go inside. There hasn't been many jump shots, and both are trying to establish their game right now. And Bill Cartwright has hit his first three of three from the free throw line. And the outside official, Hugh Hollins, indicating a lane violation that Cliff Robinson stepped in too quickly. You may leave and step over the line when the ball's released. You can see there the ball's clearly in Cartwright's hand. He's all the way across in the lane. Well, see, that's Bill Cartwright's. Watch it, what, how he shoots. He comes up with it and then releases where most 
free throw shooters, they come through all in one motion. He has two motions. Well, a head fake by Cartwright. Jordan able to keep it alive. Paxson for three. Pippen back for Jordan. And the Bulls here in the early going shooting the three-pointers. They have not been a team normally that looks for the downtown shot. While Portland does. And the Bulls have been off the mark. Only two of ten in this first quarter. Terry Porter. That was two-point range. He had the foot on the line. And Porter's bucket giving Portland a 13-7 lead. One other thing to look for. When you shoot a perimeter shot for Chicago, Portland sends that man and tells him to take off for the long lead pass. They fly the jump shooter's man on the shot. He does not have box out responsibility. So long rebounds will come back to Chicago. Shot clock has expired. It's a 24 second violation. Sometimes it's just a matter of inches between the two and the three. Porter going up, touching the white line, which shows that it is only a two, not a three. If the fans can look at see how Clyde Drexler is playing Michael Jordan. He's not up on him. He's playing like two feet off when he's enticing him to take that jump shot. And right now, Mike is over two from out there. And let's see what happens during the course of the game. Cliff Robinson. Yes. And the Blazers have hit their first seven field goal attempts. It's Portland 15, the Bulls 7. Five minutes gone by. And on the other end, you have a two for ten Chicago team. And once again, Portland on the run. Percy spinning. Oh! That's their first miss of the night. And Pippen was hit on a return. Jake O'Donnell making it very clear that he has the call. And it's against Porter, his second. And in the transition period, the quick outlet pass, Porter trying to slow up that Bulls fast break attack. And that's one of the things that Cleveland tried to do was particularly jam Pippen, who leads so many of the fast break opportunities. Portland over the foul limit. So Pippen to the foul line. Scotty Pippen telling us that the ankle and wrist injuries are behind him. He finished the Cleveland series strong with 29 points, game six on Friday night. And Richfield had an up and down series against the New York Knicks and then turned it up against the Cavaliers. Bill Cartwright replaced by Scott Williams. So Cartwright departs. Scott Williams making his presence felt against the Cavaliers played very well. Had two very strong games. And Mar Bill Cartwright was not happy. When he saw that uh, Scott Williams was coming in for him, he really got upset. Six and a half remaining in this first quarter. To this point, the game has been played at the Blazers' tempo. It's tipped home as Bryant was able to get inside to use his muscle and give the Blazers a 17-9 lead. Well, he may have got the easiest two points of his career right there because I would have given them to Chicago, those two. The Bulls only two of 11 from the field. Jordan again from three-point land. Most unusual to see Michael bombing away. That's his third three-point attempt. And he finally hits. The Marv Clyde Drexler is enticing him to shoot it. This communication as Percy's pass went astray. Now with Paxson and Jordan in the backcourt, Williams and Grant and Pippen up front. Now Jordan posting up, goes to the fadeaway, through the foul, it comes. Drexler picking up his first. One of the things that Chicago knows it can do is post up Michael Jordan at any time it wants to during the course of a season. They didn't use it much in the regular season, but in the playoffs, they've gone to it more and more, the post-up of Michael Jordan. Hey, he's their best post-up player. And you know during the playoffs, you must change your game. So they have changed their game, utilizing Michael Jordan's skill in the post. Balls again go to the pressure. Porter with the open shot. Terry Porter during the course of the playoffs has been in what 
can be labeled the shooter's zone coming off a subpar regular season. He has really turned it on. Lasers lead 1915. Porter again. Terry Porter has hit two points and a four from the field. 21 15 Portland. And then he got back and knocked the ball away and made it. Uh, turnover for the Chicago Bulls so good presence of mind to get back on defense even after the jump shot if there are a couple factors that may play big in this entire series it's turnovers and quick shots Drexler with a quick shot Drexler on the follow up ah, nice pass for Robinson. Yeah, Robinson Portland 23 Chicago 15 just under five minutes to go in this first quarter Robert with the czar of the telespreader, Mike Fratello, along with Patrick Johnson and Ahmad Rashad. And Williams banking it hard. Portland 23, Chicago 17. And Porter fouled by Paxson. So Porter will go to the line. Do you guys see a uh, defensive shuffle coming up? Terry Porter. Has certainly had his way with John Paxson here of the early going. But it's not that Porter has taken Paxson and turned the corner or taken him down low inside. The guy's knocking out jump shots. He to knock out jumpers against anybody that gives him room. Well, what he's catching uh, Chicago is is in their transition game. See, what you normally do against other teams is you suck back into the, the paint and then come out the uh, challenge guard. But against Portland, you can't do that. You must get your defense out front and then suck back in. Well, Phil Jackson now will go with B.J. Armstrong. John Paxson will sit down after picking up his second. Terry Porter grew up in Milwaukee, did not start until his senior year at South Division High School in Milwaukee in college, played center and both forward positions. He was a sleeper first-round pick out of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. Lasers lead 25-17 as we come up on four minutes to go in this opening quarter. Shot clock out of five. There's Pippen setting up Jordan wide open for another three. Well, that three-point was created off the penetration of Pippen, and uh, Drexler slept in to stop him and. Uh, Michael was right there for the three. Now during the regular season, Michael Jordan hit only 27 from three-point land. Robinson. Oh. And back comes Pippen. Pippen all the way, lost possession, and it's deflected out by the Trailblazers. You were saying that Michael Jordan, normally not known for his three-point shooting, but remember what Ahmad told us, he was lifting weights this morning. Yes. He feels strong tonight. Timeout called by the Trailblazers. They lead by five. Magic was talking about pushing out on Terry Porter. Don't drop back because he's going to pull up and try to shoot it in your face. He feels it right now in the playoffs. And then he just follows through long enough, okay, to let everybody know that he's got the stroke. Terry Porter. And he has really turned it up during the playoffs. You see the, uh, the progress from the Lakers series to the uh, series against Phoenix and then Utah averaging 26 again. He shot only 46% during the regular season, but during the playoffs, Terry Porter has scored 30 or more four times, including that career high 41 against Utah. Well, they needed somebody to step up their game if they were going to get to this point. He was the man who stepped up his game, and ter Terry Porter had Michael for a drive and missed it, but he's taken them to this uh, point where they're at now with this great outside shooting. Danny Ainge has checked in for the first time. Robinson changed his mind. Saved by Drexler. Blazers get back. Pippen back for Jordan again for three. Well, Michael Jordan yesterday 
in commenting about the comparisons with Clyde Drexler said yes we're, we're even in every category although someone said how about three point shooting and Drexler looks for the three usually whistle for the offensive foul against Portland Mark foul committed by Mark Bryant and Jordan made the point, well, I have not chosen to shoot three-point shots. As if to say, well, if I wanted to go that route, I'd be doing the same as Drexler. Well, he has chosen to look for the three here in the first quarter. That time he passed it up and hits the two. Well, see, he hit three or four in a row. Then Clyde knows he had to come up on him, so he sucked him in that time, pump fake, and went right past him for the uh, easy two-point jump shot. And you see Rick Adelman is shaking his head on the sideline. What he's thinking about is they are not coming to meet the basketball against the Chicago team. You can't wait for the ball to come to you. Oh, a strong move by Kersey to draw the foul. The basket counts, and Jerome Kersey will go to the line. Portland leads by two. Kersey, the ability to put it on the floor, take it to the basket, one of the big pluses for this Trailblazer team. They have so many guys that can put it down and take their defenders off the dribble. That stopped a 10-2 run by Chicago, sparked by Jordan, who has 16 points in this first quarter. Three-point play for Kersey. And it's Portland 28, Chicago 25. Two minutes remaining in the first. Jordan eluding Robinson. Yes! 18 from Michael Jordan. Traveling violation. Well, my Coach Patello said, Magic, what do you think Michael's going to do? Is he going to come out fast or slow? Here, behind the back, he just tricked. Cliff Robinson went right up. He, he's in his groove right now. He feels it. He wants the ball, and he wants to lead this team in his first quarter. Here's Armstrong. A.J. Armstrong hits on his first field goal attack. The Bulls lead 29-28. Drexler with a beautiful move, and he is hammered. Wait a moment. Dick Fabretta appeared to be calling the foul against Chicago, but Jake O'Donnell changed the call. The outside official said no. It's an offensive foul. But Dick Fabretta stopped short of making the call, checked with the outside official, basically said, did you have a better look at it, a better angle than I did? Jake nodded, said yes. Jake took the call. Drexler did not like the call. Now, Jerome Percy will sit down and a one-time Chicago ball. Enos Watley has checked in. He's guarding B.J. Armstrong. And I would get Drexler out of there as soon as I could if I were Rick Adelman. You got two fouls on your guy. Take him out. Rest him for the end of this quarter. Grant from George. The Bulls 31. The Trailblazers 28. See, this is the time that Portland has to slow their game down now. Okay, let's see what we got here. Not go so fast. Got to take that crowd back out of it. I'm sorry, Mark. Take the crowd back out of the game. Knocked out by Armstrong. 13 on the 24. And Drexler will throw in. Asian Watley now in the backcourt. Bryant with... Drexler Robinson up front. The rejection by Williams. Here's Armstrong on the run for the pull-up. Rebound Pippen. Rebound Grant. The Bulls by five. And you could see the excitement in BJ that time. He couldn't wait to get down the court and then actually took a shot that was a little bit too quick, I'm sure, for what Phil Jackson would have liked. Robinson. Robinson getting the roll, and it brings Portland within three. 15 seconds to go in this first quarter. Well, one thing that Chicago has not seen very often in the playoff is a 30-point quarter for their basketball team, so they got to be happy with the way they're scoring. Jordan. And 
time has run out in this first quarter. Michael Jordan, seven for 13 from the field, including three three-pointers. To turn it around after the Trailblazers hit their first seven field goal attempts. So after one here in game one of the best of seven NBA Finals, it's the Bulls 33 and the Trailblazers 30. Well, it was one of the most celebrated NBA collegiate drafts of all time. Back in 1984, after Akeem Olajuwon was taken number one by Houston, this is what took place. Portland selects Sam Bowie, University of Kentucky. The Chicago Bulls pick Michael Jordan of the University of North Carolina. Well, Sam Bowie was taken by the Blazers as the second pick in the draft. And they have certainly uh, heard about uh, that selection a few times over the years. Michael Jordan then was uh, the next selection. Back in 83, the uh, Bulls going with Enos Watley, who as it turns out is now a member of the the Portland Trailblazers, they took Watley ahead of Clyde Drexler. But you flash back to that time, most NBA teams would go for the big men because they felt that if you had a shot in a championship, it would usually start at the center position. Bill Cartwright just checked back in as the second quarter gets underway, is called for his second foul. And Marv, you're right. At that time, everybody felt you had to have a center, uh, like Kareem or somebody, and that's why they picked Sam Bowie, knowing that they had Clyde Drexler. So where are you going to fit uh, Michael in at? The other uh, question about Sam Bowie, who certainly had a... Uh, a decent NBA career. The, the injury uh, problems that he had at University of Kentucky. Sam now, of course, a member of the New Jersey Nets. Here's Porter. Terry Porter continues the onslaught. He's five for five. He has 12 points. The Bulls now lead 33-32. And Bobby Hansen, a seldom used player by Phil Jackson, has come on here at the start of the second quarter. Pippen was fouled. Hit by Robinson on the block. The early entrance of Bobby Hansen may be the result of the great Hodges sprained ankle, although Hodges uh, is in uniform and, and ready to go. And the other thing is you have Danny Ainge on the floor with some size at the guard position. Phil Jackson bringing out Bobby Hansen, who has equal size and strength to match up against him, not to give Ainge a real good look at the rim. And you know that uh, in this series, Marv, uh, Michael Jordan's going to have to get more rest. Because you're playing an offensive threat in, in uh, Clyde Drexler. It's not uh, Craig Eaglow or nobody where he can rest on, on defense. He's going to have to play defense. That's why you're probably going to see more of uh, Hanson in, as this series progress. Michael Jordan sitting down following that 18 point first quarter. So it is Hanson matched with Ainge. Buck Williams is back up front with Robinson and Duckworth. Ainge and Porter in the backcourt. Robinson around Pippen. And a tackle by Williams. Three on two for the Bulls. Pippen for Hanson. Wide open. Yes. Bobby Hanson, who spent seven years as a member of the Utah Jazz, one year with Sacramento, off the bench to hit on his first field goal attempt. Bobby Hansen is one of those kamikaze guys. You put him out there, he gives everything he has for the minute that he's on the floor. A great role player for a team. And when they, we were out there doing our, our, our pregame, as you want to call it, I was telling Dan Gies, I said, hey, you in another championship? Well, Hansen came over and grabbed me and said, look, Irvin, I just want to win one. He's already won one. <laughs> Bobby Hansen had played in only four of... 16 games in this year's playoffs. Here's Ainge. Rebound Buck Williams. No box out. And Buck Williams able to put it home. The Bulls now lead 37 34. Pippen played on a switch by Duckworth. Finds the open Armstrong. 
Rebounded by Pippen. Stripped by Porter. The Bulls enter the first quarter with a 16-5 run, but the Trailblazers have come roaring back, and they now trail by one. Portland did shoot 13 of 19 in that first quarter, hitting their first seven. Field goal attempt, Chicago 11 of 24. Illegal defense called for the first time against Portland. 9.34 to go in the second quarter. It's Chicago by one. We'll be back in a moment. Rashad back at Chicago Stadium now eight years ago when Michael Jordan was drafted here you know no one nobody sent anybody to the airport from the Bulls to pick him out and this man George Kohler found him wandering around the airport well it wasn't really wandering around the airport he stepped off the airplane I was standing there waiting for him strictly by accident and you happen to be a chauffeur at that point at that point yes I had my own company and went out there to pick up a customer the guy never showed up and Mike was the last guy off that airplane so I asked him if he needed a ride he said yes and it worked out very well you've been his personal assistant now for eight years eight years yes All right George thanks a lot Mark yes uh, Michael Jordan found himself wandering around the airport and wondering what kind of organization was he drafted by? I, I I know you did not receive the same treatment, Roger. No, the chauffeur was there, but the, the difference is now that uh, I still know how to drive, and right now Michael don't know how to drive because he's being chauffeured around oh, so much. <laughs> but Buck Williams commits his third foul, and he will sit down. Jerome Kersey checking back in. Well, screening becomes such an important part of getting the shooters open, and in the playoffs, the physicalness of the series allows for a lot of offensive foul. Defenders chase him so hard, it's tough to get a good shot at the guy to clear your uh, shooters. Shot clock at five. There's Pippen. He's been quiet. That's a second field goal. Eight points for Pippen. And the Bulls now lead 39. 36 at one point Portland led by as many as eight Robinson. Yes Nice touch by Cliff Robinson his fifth field goal. He has 10 points the Bulls 39 the Blazers 38 Mar with all the foul trouble that Portland is in they should be happy where they're at right now with the score what being what it is as three on Williams two apiece. That's a three two apiece on Duckworth Porter. And Drexler. Porter putting moves on Armstrong. A rare miss for Terry Porter. Armstrong ahead of the field. It's Chicago by three. And B.J. Armstrong taking a page out of Portland's playbook. Took off on the shot. Was down the floor just waving, hoping Pippen would look up. Danny Ainge buries the three-pointer. And for Portland, their first three-point field goal. So Danny Ainge in playoff competition now tied for second all-time in three-pointers. Michael Cooper, number one, but within range of Ainge. Scott Williams. Strong move by the second-year player out of North Carolina to give the Bulls a two-point lead. But during the regular season, Ainge shot 35% from the three-point line. Here in the playoffs, over 48% from the three-point line. Robinson with the step as he whipped by Williams. This was a big matchup concern for Chicago. Would Robinson be too quick for that backup guy to guard once Chicago started making substitutions? The backup guy happens to be Scott Williams, and so far, he can't handle Robinson. Cliff Robinson in his third year out of the University of Connecticut has come off the bench to hit for 12 points. Armstrong, yes. That is his third field goal. He has six. Chicago leads by two. Porter. Foul by Armstrong. 
that matchup we talked about. Can Williams guard Robinson? Well, off of this play right here, you'd have to say he's going to have a long night. All right. Thank you, Jay. And Chicago with a 45-43 lead on Portland. You can see the differences between these two clubs. Come playoff time, the Portland Trailblazers have stepped it up with Porter, Kersey, Duckworth, Drexler, Ames all raising their scoring average. On the other hand, Chicago certainly hurt in the series against the Knicks and had difficulties with Cleveland. Aside from Michael Jordan, they've gone the other way. Well, a completely different set of games over on the Eastern Conference side, particularly against, as you mentioned, the New York Knicks. And you had a number of the Chicago Bull players who had nagging injuries that did not allow them to play their normal game. And plus, uh, I, I thought that the Portland team defense enabled all their scoring to pick up because of turnovers and steals. They were, they were able to get out for easy layups. Chicago with a 45 44 lead six and a half remaining in this first half Michael Jordan after getting a considerable rest has returned the same for Clyde Drexler and they match up once again here's Jordan to the fadeaway 20 for Jordan well they posted Michael but actually ran a little screen away action in the lane that was a Levingston on Grant type of away from the ball action but Jordan used the post up to his advantage. Ainge took a shot from Levingston, who had just checked in. See, Jordan is looking to the lane to see if Grant's open there for a split second. When he doesn't like what he sees there, well, then he makes something nice. Nice happen for the team. Superstars love this situation. This build up to be Jordan versus Drexler. Michael Jordan is saying, OK, come on. You're in my building. Come on with it. I like it. Well, to this point, Clyde Drexler, three of six for six points along with two fouls while Michael Jordan going to the three point shot at 18 of his 20 in the first quarter. It will be Chicago ball Phil Jackson with Jordan and Armstrong in the backcourt. He has Grant Levingston and caught right up front. So Scotty Pippen getting a rest. Pippen with eight points, seven assists in this first half. You got Danny Ainge trying to keep Levingston off the offensive board, so he's got his work cut out there. Portland with the ball. They are down by two. Percy played by Grant. Shot clock at five. Duckworth gets inside, but it will not count. A traveling violation. Well, the rotation along the baseline for Chicago came a little bit late, but it was still just enough to bother Duckworth as he turned to make the layup. He had a pause for a second. The travel took place. This is game one of the best of seven. Game two here on Friday. Nine o'clock Eastern time here on NBC. And Grant hit the deck, shaken up, but he's all right. Chicago leads by four. Drexler for three. Jordan for three. Well, Michael has gone to a new weapon. That's his fourth three-point field goal. He's ready to play. He is ready. The Bulls seven and Portland takes a timeout. If you're wondering why Michael Jordan is wide open for these three-point shots, it's because as the ball goes on the floor, the entire defense of the Trailblazers collapses down below the dotted line area. As a result, when the ball comes back out, it takes Danny Ainge too long to recover, and then he's worried Michael's going to ball fake and go around. 
Conlon. The result, a clean look at the rim for Michael Jordan. The Chicago Bulls, as we mentioned earlier, not noted as a three-point shooting ball club, while Portland is. And Chicago's hit four of eight, all four by Jordan, four of six from downtown, and the four and a half for an NBA Finals game. That's Jordan with the steal, eluding Ainge. Yes. The Bulls by nine. Jordan has 25. Michael Jordan with four three-pointers and a half has tied the NBA Finals record for most three-pointers in a half. Let's go to the wild shot. Livingston gets to the rebound, and here come the balls, led by Armstrong. He fires. Terry Porter blocked by B.J. Armstrong. A moment ago, we talked about the deciding factor here might be turnovers, which then lead to quick shots. The turnover caused by Michael Jordan's defense, the quick shot caused by Michael Jordan's offense at the other end. I tell you, the tail of the tape. See, this is what Michael lived for. He, he wanted this challenge, and he's showing Clyde, not only Clyde, but the world that, hey, I am the greatest. I am the best in the world. Drexler wide open pass on the outside shot, and then he drew the foul. It was packed on the play. Jordan now has 25 points. Conrad call for the foul is third. 25 for Jordan. The most points in an NBA Finals game in one half, 33 by Elgin Baylor. He did an April of 62, and we still have 341 remaining in this half. And Jordan is only eight points away from that all-time record. Well, we just saw Clyde pass up a wide-open 15-foot. I mean, can guarding somebody that puts 25 on your only kind of make you think twice about what you want to do? Exactly. And he, uh, Michael has taken him out of his rhythm, and also two fouls has not gotten Clyde, not enabled Clyde to get into his rhythm. Michael is in his rhythm, but Clyde is not in his, to his offensively. The Bulls lead 54-47. Drexler went for the steal, and it's Jordan again. Michael Jordan, 11 for 17, 27. Oh, Kersey with a facial. Jerome Kersey cuts it to a seven-point Chicago lead. We come up on three minutes to go in the first half. And Marv, this is an important three minutes for the Portland Trailblazers to just try to stay in this ball game. Jordan with the one-on-one -on -one move, found Grant, tipped home by Scott Williams. The Bulls 58, and the Blazers 49. Robinson. Run down by Kersey. Goes to the alley -oop. It will be Chicago ball. And those are the kinds of plays that if they happen at the wrong time, they wind up leading to runs, particularly by a Chicago Bulls team. It's the right time and place that you talk about when you want to throw lob passes. Unfortunately, for the Blazers, they're not coming at the right time. 2.20 to go in the first half. Pippen. Jordan for three. Yes. That is an NBA Finals record. Five three-pointers in a half. Michael Jordan hits the three. He now has 30 points. He is three points away from most points scored in a half in an NBA final. Elgin Baylor with the record set back in 62. And as you see, the most three-point field goals in an NBA finals game is six. Michael Cooper did it for the Lakers against Boston. Phil Lambeer of Detroit did it against Portland. My, oh my, oh my. That's all you can say. Michael Jordan loves this platform of 
displaying his skills, and especially, like I said, he got somebody in Clyde Drexler to go against. The Bulls have opened up a 12-point lead. Two minutes remaining. First half. for three, air ball. Here's Jordan for three, yes! Did you see that look? Michael indicating he can't believe it. Well, if you take those hurried shots, that's what's going to happen. The runs of the Chicago Bulls can open the game wide. The defensive pressure, the steals, the transition games, and then Pippen taking it to the hole. Michael following it back up again, throws it down. He feels it. There's nothing else you can say other than the man feels it and lets us know. Oh, here's that three again. You know, and, and just let us know that, hey, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling good. It's my game. I love it. I love it. And Michael Jordan, with 35 points, has set an NBA record most points in a half in an NBA championship series. He has keyed this 19-4 Chicago run over the last four minutes. So Michael Jordan has erased Elgin Baylor, the one-time Los Angeles Laker, from the record book. Baylor with 33 and a half back in April of, of 62. And Michael Jordan with his sixth three-point field goal has tied an NBA Finals mark for most three-pointers in an entire game. What more can you say? What more can you say? I mean, you know, let's go back to what we talked about at the top of the show. Poor decision making. Right now, Portland is making poor decisions. Three pointer by Clyde Drexler, air ball. Cliff Robinson shoots off balance shot. It returns a layup. Steal by uh, uh, Pippen on an errant pass. Dunk Michael Jordan. So it's just four decisions leading up to this big lead. And the other thing you mentioned, Magic, in the last three minutes, so important because championship teams know when they've got their opponents heads down a little bit. Instead of going in with a complacent 10, 12-point lead, they try to bury it just before halftime. Exactly. And this is a Portland club that opened up by hitting its first seven field goals. We talked at the start about the fact that they have certainly had the reputation about losing their poise. Cliff Robinson. Robinson has played well. He has 14. And the ball's now lead 66 to 51. You know, normally when you're down this big, you say, well, the team must not be shooting well. But Portland is shooting over 61% in this first half. And Grant took a push from Robinson. That second foul charge to Cliff Robinson. Michael Jordan with 18 points in the first quarter, 17 in the second. Remember, he sat out a good portion of this second quarter. Here's Jordan again from downtown. So he's six for nine from three-point range. But Marv, you know what's making this 35 points that he has in the half so so outstanding is the fact that normally he's driving and doing spectacular shots in the lane, and tonight he's, it's all jump shots. And he stayed away from the outside shot against the Cavaliers in game six. That's an illegal defense call for the first time against Chicago because Michael Jordan was bothered by the, by the sprained wrist, and then he went to the drive and certainly excelled in uh, took the Bulls to the victory down the stretch of the fourth quarter. 16 big points in the fourth quarter against Cleveland.
Kelsey, rejected by Grant. The Bulls with a three on two. Final seconds of this first half. Grant. Williams knocked it away, and time has run out. First half here in Chicago. Michael Jordan, 14 of 21, an NBA championship series record, 35 points in the half. And you have the idea, even Michael was astounded by his proficiency, in particular from three-point range. Bob Costas and Quinn Buckner coming up next. This the 241st consecutive setup at Chicago Stadium. Better than 18,000 on hand. And the Bulls turning it on in the second quarter, led by Michael Jordan. Lead the Portland Trailblazers by 15. Jordan opens up with Paxson in the backcourt. Cartwright, Grant, and Pippen on the front line. Paxson. Yes. John Paxson. Hitting on his first field goal, and it's Chicago 68 and Portland 51. You know that was a set play coming out of the uh, out of half. They wanted to get John involved, ran a double pick for him, and he came off shooting a jump shot. Percy. High point man for Portland, Cliff Robinson with 14, and Terry Porter with 13. Cartwright. So Bill Cartwright with his first field goal. For the Bulls, only Michael Jordan in double figures. Scotty Pippen with eight, Horace Grant with six, A.J. Armstrong, Scott Williams each, six points. To see the Chicago Bulls defense up over playing, denying Portland, forcing him to pop down deeper to start their offense. And off that uh, bucket by Rexler, the Bulls now lead 70, 53. Minute and a half gone by in the third quarter. Cartwright getting the good position, then threw back out to Pippen. Maxim checked the clock. Grant. The difference in the Chicago offense compared to the difference in the Portland offense is the fact that Chicago is taking their time. They're running through all the options. When the first option breaks down for uh, Portland, though, they go to a one-on-one -on -one and take bad shots from going to the one-on-one, -on -one, where Chicago flows in their offense. And that's one of the things they wanted to stop was the quick shot type of thing. The jump ball that time produced by the excellent defense of Grant. Timing it, getting it from behind. During the course of the playoffs, following the series against Miami, Chicago sweeping by Miami in three. We have rarely seen the Chicago Bulls Pippen off the break. What a recovery by Pippen because the ball was knocked away, but Pippen was able to get it back. And Portland wants to talk it over. When you can get easy scores off a jump ball situation, it's such an advantage. You take advantage of every opportunity presented to you, the Chicago Bulls. Scotty Pippen on his way to a triple-double right now, 10.7 rebounds, 7 assists. At the end of this layup, watch how he almost loses the ball right there, but those big hands hold on just long enough to guide it in. The soft touch by Scotty Pippen. Going back to the latter stage of the second quarter, over the last eight minutes, Chicago has outscored Portland 27 to 8, and they have this big lead, 74. 53. Another Portland turnover. Paxson open. Yes. So the Bulls now lead 76 53. And Chicago got the Trailblazers where they want them. Just playing random offense and turnover again. Here come Pippen. 
Jackson. And another 24 for Chicago. Jordan for three. And it comes back to Paxson. And now Jordan being guarded by Porter. Here's Pippen. Yes, and it counts. Scotty Pippen has the mismatch. No way Duckworth can play him off the dribble. Pippen shows him this is the way to the basket, big guy. But credit, credit Horace Grant with this move because Horace Grant moved out of the post for him. That enabled the, the lane to open up, but Scotty Pippen can take it down and score the layup. It's the recognition of teammates when there's a mismatch. Wait a minute, there's the guy with the ball. Pippen guarded by Duckworth. Open it up. Let him have the lane. Three-point play for Pippen. And the Bulls have outscored the Trailblazers 13 to 2 in this third quarter. Robinson. Now Jordan being played by Kersey. with his first field goal of the third quarter. He now has 37. That was a three-point attempt. It just gets worse and worse for the Trailblazers. Well, Mark, well they're not going inside. See, they stand on the outside trying to shoot jumpers, and they're not falling. You got to pound that ball inside, try to get some foul, try to slow this momentum that the Chicago Bulls have, and they're not doing that. Jordan. with an 81 53 lead. Here's Robinson. He drew the foul. Called on Williams. Well, in this third quarter, Rick Adelman has been going with different people match against Michael Jordan. It is no longer Clyde Drexler. You know, we had heard in the buildup prior to the game that is Michael Jordan going to be worn out having to play somebody like Clyde Drexler? What's it going to do to his offensive game? Well, what's happened is Jordan's offensive game is right at the top of itself. And if there's anybody right now who should have a concern, okay, with the matchup situation, Rick Adelman now has made a change. And whether or not this is a statement that he will continue to do throughout the series remains to be seen. But certainly, Drexler was not the right guy in that half to be playing Michael Jordan. Well, they, not only do they have bad matchups there with Michael Jordan, but they have, right now they have a bad matchup with the Chicago Bull team because they're not affecting anything that the Chicago Bulls are doing right now, especially offensively. They're moving through the lane just easy. They're not getting bumped, hit, anything. Shot clock at four. Chicago ball with one on the 24. Williams. Scott Williams did well to get off the shot, and then he got the benefit of the friendly rim. 83 55 Chicago. Mark Williams. Is foul. He'll go to the line. The Bulls have outscored the Trailblazers now 17 to 4 in this third quarter. You know, I want to go back to that matchup of Drexler on Jordan for a second. It, it's not to say that Clyde, okay, wasn't trying to do a good job. I don't care who they would have had on Michael Jordan in that first half. Jordan was on a roll. He was in a bubble, and it just happened to be Clyde was the guy that was guarding him in the first half. That doesn't mean you chuck that out for the rest of the series because you come out another game and the guy digs in and does a good job on the other end. So you stay with what you know best. Rick Adelman knows his team better than anybody else. He'll make those decisions in the end. But right now, they're not going about getting back in this game the right way. You got to pound that ball inside. I don't care what happens. 
get it inside, make things happen that way instead of shooting jumpers. Nobody's hitting for him outside, so let's go inside. And Pippen's pass picked off by Williams. Now Drexler picked up by Grant. Robinson rejected by Grant. Drexler off the recovery. By Drexler with only his fifth field goal, he has 12 points. Last touch by Portland. So going back to Magic's inside statement, there's only certain ways you can stop a run and stop the clock. One way is if you get fouled to go to the free throw line and stop the run. Oh! Uncle Jordan off a set play on the inbounds. So Jordan with 39 and the Bulls lead 85-58. It is another Blazer turnover. Marv, I'm going to just keep my VCR on because when that tape is done tonight and my baby is born, I'm going to just pull it out and say, this is Michael Jordan. <laughs> I'm introducing my son or daughter to Michael Jordan on this game tonight. And the foul is called. When your baby is born. That's right. Soon. Out of bounds underneath. If you turn your head for a second, Jordan will back cut you, go to the rim. It's just a matter of lobbing the thing up on top. They love starting Michael in the middle of the lane, and then he operates from there. Are we uh, looking at uh, momentary? Scotty Pippen with 15 points. Chicago. Bulls now lead 87, 58. Jordan in the middle of the lane. There's the back cut. Starts right, goes left. The lob, perfect. Here's Ainge for three. Oh. Robinson rejected. it. And Pippen puts it down. Well, this has reached the point of embarrassment for Portland. They are being blown away here in the third. 5-23 remaining. A few moments ago, the lob to Michael Jordan. Here's how they set it up. The two big men set screens. Normally, Paxson runs his man off the screen. Then Jordan comes off the double looking for a jump shot. But this time, when Paxson goes, Jordan fakes, back cuts, goes to the front of the rim. Here goes Paxson around the double. The fake, change of direction. On the money with the lob. The timing is perfect by Michael Jordan. From a different angle, down low. Pippen's the guy throwing the pass. Jordan's the one making the play happen. So the Bulls with an 89-58 lead. 5.15 to go in the third. Portland now with Porter and Ainge in the backcourt. An offensive foul has been called. It's on Drexler. That's three on Clyde. Can there be anything more frustrating than taking a timeout, setting up a play, telling your team to execute, you come out and you get an offensive foul on the screen? Well, let's give the Bulls credit. The way you beat Portland is to get them in a game like this, where they have to think, they have I'm to uh, make decisions, and uh, usually they come up with poor decision making, and they've done that throughout this game. Poor decision. Tip in right there by Williams, but they've been frustrated. Turnovers and uh, jump shots. That's all they've been doing. Turn the ball over, taking jump shots, and the Bulls been transferring that into points on the offensive end. Scott Williams is now five for five for ten points. Loose ball foul has been called on Paxson. Let's go over to Amon. All right, thanks, Mark. I'm joined now by James Jordan, and we have talked about Michael being focused in the past, but today, this is ridiculous. Well, I'll tell you, today this kid has shown that it is eat his Sweeties, drink his Gatorade, and he's wearing his Hanes underwear. There is a very nice commercial for all those three products. Back to you, Mark. I don't know, is James collecting the, uh, the fees also? Exactly. He was in the Haynes commercial, so he knows he's got to get a part of that, that, that check, some of that money. Scott Williams, small for the foul, is fourth. 
but magic of most significance you uh, dropped the point a moment ago your wife cookie is is due I guess momentarily so you have the VCR set and uh, this will be the first thing that uh, the uh, the new addition to the family will see Michael Jordan's performance in the first half that's right and within a week or so we'll, ha we'll have the baby and uh, I'm gonna throw that tape right in there I'm sure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> while I'm sitting there watching he or she will be sitting there watching you realize that the voice of the czar will be very very scary for a youngster <laughs> Down to 415 remaining in this third quarter. And the Bulls lead by 31. Off the steal. Pass behind Porter, so it slows it down. He fires one up. An air ball from downtown. And here's Porter again. Out of control sequence for Terry Porter. If the fans are wondering why the press and other people keep talking about decision making, well, there was a bad decision. You shoot a jump shot with nobody back. Pull the ball out, run a play, because you're down over 30 points, so you got to run a play now. In effect, you got to get back into your normal sequence, even if you're trailing by 30 points. Exactly. And here comes Jordan. Armstrong with the pull up. The Bulls lead 93 60. Wanted to travel on, on Drexler. Porter shooting the three. Loose ball foul on Robinson. Long rebounds take place when you're not shooting well and when you pull up and shoot quick perimeter shots. As a result, the Chicago Bulls, who have one of the best sets of point guard, two man, three man, can get out and fill the lanes. They're always running back at you when you're not making your jumpers. The hand for Scott Williams. Replaced by Stacy King making his first appearance. So Scott Williams continues to excel in the playoffs. Williams with 10 points. He's hit five of five from the field. Pippen going to his left. Yes, and a count. When Chicago plays pick and roll basketball, it's supposed to be an aggressive double team, almost a trap. But you see, Pippen gets a clear path to the basket. There was no trap. He was not forced to pick up the dribble. He got a good look, split, took it to the hole. Standing ovation for Michael Jordan. I'm wondering if we will see him on the floor anymore this evening. I doubt it. Up 36 right now. It looks like you're gonna go into the fourth quarter up, being up 30 or more unless something happens in this next three minutes. So I doubt if you'll see him back again. Jordan with 39 points. NBA championship series record, 35 in the first half. And Pippen was fouled. The Bulls have outscored the Blazers here in the third quarter, 30 to 9. Robinson call for his fifth and it puts Portland over the limit so Pippen will shoot a pair Michael Jordan 16 for 26 6 for 10 from three-point range a 10 attempts from downtown is a record for a NBA finals game Scotty Pippen is only one rebound away from a triple double. A very nice stat line. Now you want to know what the difference is between the last two series that the Bulls played in and this series is the fact that when they went to the basket on Cleveland or New York, they got fouled and, and, and instead of being able to put it in for a three-point play, they just went to the free throw line, and that was a, a good move right there by Jerome Kersey. And in this series, they're able to go to the free throw line, I mean, in this game right here, and uh, not get higher fouls and, and continue to make the basket just like there. Now, a foul, again. a reach in foul by Jerome on Pippen, and he scores the basket anyway. Once again, Scotty Pippen with an opportunity for a three point play. 
that in-between game, take it off the dribble, but then no one to pull up because the defense rotates over and stops you short. You must have the in-between game in the NBA. And with Jordan going to the bench, Pippen has scored five straight points, and that's what the Bulls usually want to do, go to Pippen when Michael Jordan sits down. The Bulls 100, and the Blazers 62. As we approach two minutes remaining in the third quarter, a blowout in game one of his best of seven. Two minutes of play. So Duckworth able to convert. If you just look back for a second, the way Chicago defended the pick and roll, they've got Portland backing up all the time, not attacking. When Chicago plays pick and roll, Portland tries to trap it. Chicago takes it to the basket strong. I'm strong. Percy lost to King with a steal. And Stacey King hears it from the crowd. point earlier that for the first time in a long while as Brexler was was fouled we are seeing the Chicago Bulls that were seen throughout the regular season regular season that saw them win 67 and lose 15 and a Bulls club that we saw during the course of the playoffs a year ago well when you get into this free flowing game this is where the Bulls are at their best See, and, and, and they're not getting a hard foul. Um, the, the Portland Trailblazers are not trying to dictate tempo. They're running down and playing right into the Bulls' hands by taking quick shots. So now you're sh seeing the Bulls instead of oh. the Chicago Bulls. He's got it wrong, doesn't he? Okay. And this is what he gets the big bucks for. <laughs> Magic watching too much Saturday Night Live, I think. <laughs> a minute remaining in this third quarter the Bulls 100 the Blazers 66 and Jake Odotta with the call away from the ball pushing foul but when you're down 34 points with an entire quarter to go do you try and shake it up a little bit maybe throw your full court pressure half court trap on try to get a little run going for yourself or you just basically sit back and think you're going to be able to dig it out man to man you know defensively you know right now fourth quarter what the play the Blazers should do is try to get into something now try to see what can work for us on Friday night run our offense to get ready for Friday that's the only thing they should be concerned with try to get ready for Friday the largest margin of victory in an NBA final series game Washington beat Seattle by 35 back in June of 78 117 82 the Bulls here lead it by 35. The rookie point guard decided he was going to be an offensive rebounder that time. He's got to learn you must cover the backcourt for your team. No one back. The Bulls are going to fill the lanes. And this time, instead of Pippen, you've got your 6'10 power forward, Grant, scoring at the end. And they say, yeah, two points for me. Robert Pack, the rookie from University of Southern California, checking in. Pack rejected by Pippen. And the foul is called on Portland. It's on Drexler. That is his fourth. Now, I, I seem to remember somewhere where a team one time in the playoffs got blown out real big in a, in a certain game and they had a comeback and I think they were able to do it is that I thought I was going to say that story to the fourth quarter <laughs> but now that you mentioned that the Boston massacre when we got beat I think by about 46 in the opening game of that series and um, sitting there watching in the fourth quarter 
Boston. I mean, everything went. Sky hooks, jump shots by even the reserve players kind of made me all of us get upset, get our game together. And how did Pat Riley handle that for the next one? He made us watch film for the next three days. All the bad things that we had done in that game and uh, just got our minds ready. And we had to play a more physical game, a smarter game. And we were able to do that in game two. Right, here's Pack with a very impressive drive. Robert Pack goes 6 2, 180, but uh, he can soar, as you just saw. Final seconds of the third quarter. The Bulls 104 and the Blazers 68. Michael Jordan with 35 of his 39 in the first half. Chicago with a 38 7 advantage over Portland in this third quarter. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. Chicago Stadium, Marv Albert, along with Magic Johnson, Mike Fratello, Ahmad Rashad, as we head to the fourth quarter. Game one of the best of seven, game two here in Chicago. Friday night will be on hand starting 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Pacific, for game two of this best of seven. Well, Michael Jordan has checked back in. We thought perhaps we had seen the last of Jordan in the final minutes of the third. Here's Ainge galloping. And it's tipped home by Bryant. That's the first time you that we saw five or six passes from the Portland team and, and ended up in a score. That's what they must do. Pass the ball around five or six times and then take the shot instead of one pass and shot. Bulls 104, Blazers 70. Jordan now guarded by Ainge. Levingston, yes, Cliff Levingston, who has shown flashes during the playoffs once again this season, ending on his first field goal. And that started out as a Michael Jordan shot attempt, and only because the defense got a hand on it, he was able to recover, get control, and then find the teammate and drop it off at the end to Levingston. Very poor shooting by O'Brien. Crowd wanted to travel. Portland only five for 21 in the third quarter. Stacy King not able to hit. Here's Bryant sweeping in. And the ball's now lead 106 74. Rick Adelman going with Duckworth and Bryant up front. And then he has three guards. Watley is out there now with Pack and Age. For Chicago, you really only have one guy that can create shots. That's Michael Jordan, and he's not really warmed up yet, so they're going to struggle offensively, this group, for a little while. Aim. Oh. See, I don't know if I like this, because you, you got a man in Michael Jordan in a groove, in a rhythm. Why, why not, okay, have a seat for the rest of the night and stay in that groove for next game instead of bringing him out now when he's cold and he's... He's, he's on the floor. That's the second time on the floor. And uh, he may get hurt. He, he may get out of that rhythm and not carry it over into Friday's game. I'll try and be Phil Jackson and think for him for a second. The one reason might be because they're so used to running their offense with either Pippen or Jordan, and Pippen was taking his blow. Phil might have thought it was too much time left in the game to let him go without one of them on the court. Maybe. Miller Genuine Draft presents Genuine Moments. Well, tonight's Miller Genuine Draft Genuine Moment occurred 
in game six of the 1980 NBA final, a 20 year old rookie guard by the name of Magic Johnson stole the show, playing all five positions. He produced 42 points, 15 rebounds, and seven assists as the Lakers eliminated the Philadelphia 76ers. And Magic, you took over at, uh, at center for the most part, as I recall, because of the injury that was suffered by Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Exactly. And, uh, Nobody uh, gave us a chance to win that game, and uh, we did that. And um, it was just a true great moment in, in my life, and, and I'm sure in just the Laker players, everybody, we all contributed in one way. Because people forgot Jamal Woods had 38 points in that game. Well, in recognition of that memorable moment, the Virginia Draft will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. You know what bothers me? I'm still what, waiting for what's my that magic song? moment, and I, <laughs> I just can't seem to find one. We will get to you eventually. And, and leading off to what you just said before the timeout uh, about Michael, I understand Coach Jackson's uh, what he wants to do. But what happens is when you when you come back in, you've been sitting and you're cold as a player. I know I didn't want to come back in because it's hard for me to get it back going again. Would you have expressed that? Would you have said, I'd rather sit it out? Um, probably not. <laughs> you just, if you're called to go in and do your job, you go in and do it. Well, the Bulls lead 106 78. Four minutes gone by. In the fourth quarter, King posting. Won't count. Hugh Hollins with the whistle before the shot. Todd Duckworth is third. And it is a non shooting foul. If they're going to win game two, Kevin Duckworth has to get more shot opportunities. He must be more involved in the offense. And he opened up involved. And the Trailblazers opened up by hitting their first seven field goal attempts. And then it all turned around as Michael Jordan went to three point land. As PJ Armstrong just did. And the Bulls now lead 109 78. PJ knows that when Michael has the ball, he just floats to that corner spot, hopes that Michael draws his defensive man in a double team situation. And it's a matter of knocking out open jump shots because Michael's going to find you and give you the ball. Wild shot thrown up by Bryant. Wayne Cooper has come on for the first time. Wayne, a 14 year veteran out of the University of New Orleans. And he is guarding King. Here's Scott Williams. Well, we talked about Terry Porter being in the shooter zone. You don't think of Scott Williams as a shooter, but he's in the zone. He's hit six of six. And the foul is called. You know, you break down Michael Jordan's game and what he contributes to the ball club. Check out this equation during the course of the playoffs. He accounts for 34% of the Bulls' points, 11% in terms of assists, which led, as you saw, to 176 points. But in the first half, with that record 35 points, as Ainge is able to bank it home, and he ages eight points, in the first half, with 35 out of Chicago's 66 points, you are talking 65% of the offense. And, and, and what is surprising about the way he did it, not the fact that he accomplished it because we know, all knew that he's capable of doing it, but it was all from the outside. Four points on drives. He had a, a, a layup and a follow-up dunk. And the rest of them were jump shots. I don't think Ennis Watley will want to see that shot on the replay. Well, that's a trouble. So the ball goes back to Portland, but first, a timeout taken with 6.23 left in the fourth. talking about the exploits of Michael Jordan and deservedly so but the other Chicago Bull who has come through in a major way Scotty Pippen while Jerome Percy has struggled to recall the last time that Portland played Chicago here in Chicago which was a blowout for the Bulls Percy went 0 for 8 
from the field against Chicago. I thought this would be the key matchup for the series, and I still feel that way. If Pippen is able to dominate Kersey, Portland can forget it. They will have no chance in this series. But if Kersey is able to come back with a strong showing, that, that will enable uh, the Portland Trailblazers to get into that free-flowing game that they like to play, and that would enable to take some pressure off of Clyde Drexler. Foul was called on Pack. Will Purdue has checked in for the first time, and now Phil Jackson with a front line of Levingston, King, and Purdue Armstrong and Hanson around the guard. So Michael Jordan sits down. Getting back to that matchup early in the year, back in November, Percy had 21 against Chicago. Pippen had 28 that particular evening as well. Alejandro Fabi will come on for the first time. Danny Ainge departs. Abdulabi in a second year out of Duke, who has not been getting the playing time. 5:45 remaining in this fourth quarter. Bobby Hansen hitting on his second field goal. He has five points, and the Bulls lead 115-80. Portland's got to realize, and in, in that in thank you for game two. There's a break right here. Good passing. Casey misses. Portland has to realize this. They cannot play the Chicago Bulls like they play Utah, like they played the Lakers. They must change their game because you can't free flow against the, the Chicago Bulls and just shoot jumpers and just come down and make bad decisions because the Bulls will turn them into dunks and layups like they have in this game. They come back at you so quick. You make a mistake, you make a wrong decision, you pay for it quickly. Armstrong. And King able to get the new 24. Well, the Portland Trailblazers knocked off the Lakers three games to one, beat the Phoenix Suns. Four games to one. There's Purdue. So Will Purdue, who has seen his playing time diminish, first against the Knicks, again, then against the uh, Cavaliers, able to hit on his first field goal attempt. Portland Trailblazers after knocking off the Lakers and the Suns, then beat Utah in six, bringing them to the NBA final. Loose ball foul on Stacey King. Chicago. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the biggest differential in an NBA final series, Washington knocking off Seattle. A 35-point difference. And right here, our score is 117 to 80. Washington beat Seattle 117 to 82. Purdue is called for the foul. It has not been a happy night for Portland coach Rick Adelman in his fourth season as head coach of the Trailblazers. The first captain of the Portland Trailblazers, an original member of the franchise. He is the NBA's second winningest coach over the last three years behind the Bulls, Phil Jackson. You know the reason why Will Purdue's time was cut because Scott Williams has been playing so great. I mean, he's been playing outstanding basketball in all the, the, the series even before this one. Scott Williams emerged last season in the playoffs. You certainly got a taste of it uh, in the series against the Lakers. Livingston able to go glass. The reason we lost that series was because of the Chicago bench. They outplayed and dominated our bench. Both Livingston and Williams came on in the championship series against the Lakers. Here's Livingston from Armstrong. The Bulls lead 121 82. You know, I, I kind of see a lot of confusion going on with the, the Portland team. They don't know what quite they want to run, and they got different guys not in the position they're supposed to be in. I think you were right on target earlier, though, where Portland was in the process of being blown out early 
third quarter, but they continue to fire up from all angles rather than go to uh, either pounding it inside or on the other hand uh, trying to work on something that might help Friday night. Timeout has been called by the Blazers with 2.56 remaining in the fourth. Portland Crab Blazers and the Chicago Bulls resume with game two of this best of seven championship series here on NBC Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time, 6 p.m. on the West Coast. That'll be Friday night, game two of the series. Stacey King on the foul line. The biggest lead of the night, a 38-point margin. The Bulls right here lead by 37. The all-time record, largest differential in an NBA Finals game, 35 points. Washington doing it against Seattle back in 78. And I think our total was 33 against the Celtics. We're right up there, too, I think. <laughs> quick research uh, tells me uh, yes. <laughs> But, but let's let's remind the fans that we lost that game by 33. We ended up winning the series. So this series is way from being over. One game is only one game. And that's what the uh, Portland Trailblazers have to keep in mind. Exactly why you have a seven game series. So if you run into something like this, you forget it, you put it behind, you learn from it, you make your adjustments, and you show up on a new night with a different energy level, perhaps a new concentration, and a few wrinkles here or there. Be a lot of tape watching tomorrow. You can believe that on that Portland Trailblazers. And you wonder what wrinkles Rick Adelman can come up with uh, against Michael Jordan. As you mentioned, uh, Mike, very little he can do when Jordan is sitting uh, from long range, six for ten from uh, three point land. But I, I would think there will be a slightly different approach. I would think we'll see a little bit more aggressive Portland defense. Perhaps a little more trapping, getting out and denying, overplaying a little bit more. Maybe go to their half-court trap that they have used at times in the past to take Chicago out of running their offense as smoothly and as well as they do. And a lot more passes on offense instead of one pass or no passes and shot attempt by the uh, Portland Trailblazers. You'll probably see them slow the game down a little bit more. How many times do you hear coaches say, uh, are we running our one-pass offense tonight? So the ball goes back. To Chicago. On a night that has seen Michael Jordan come through with one of the great NBA final performances. 35 points in the first half. And that is a new record. Here's Bryant. And Bryant gets it back. Very persistent. And able to hit the Bulls. 122. And the Blazers. 87. Portland has turned it over 20 times. And off those 20, I would believe that uh, Chicago has scored maybe 15 times off those 20 turnovers. Nice give and go between Hanson and Purdue, and Purdue is fouled. And you know what happens? Portland. Guys get to know each other in practice, and that's why that give and go was nice. You can tell that they were looking at each other and say, okay, I'm a back door, but I'm going to look for you, uh, Will, when I get it. And they worked that to perfection, the give and go. Young, young people out there should watch Bob Hansen and Will Perdue on that play because that's what basketball is all about. To me, one of the nice things about having a few days off before you start a championship series is you really notice what the points of emphasis are for the various teams, what the coaches have been emphasizing in their practice sessions. For Chicago, you knew it was offensive execution and spacing. They kept moving out behind the three-point line. Off the travel. Chicago gets it back as we approach one minute. Remaining in this fourth quarter, the capacity crowd has been filing out right throughout the quarter. An enormous night for the defending NBA champion, Chicago Bulls. Here's Purdue, wild shot. Livingston with the save off the face of Purdue. To check out the, the description of that on the Will 1900 number that he has going here in Chicago. I have a feeling he'll be dealing with that. The steal by Watley puts the move on, and Armstrong gets it back. 
to tell you how good the, the Chicago team defense has been tonight. Portland came in here averaging 115 points in the playoff. Tonight, only 89. That's how good the, the, the uh, Chicago defense have been tonight. And Pack was stopped by King. It'll be Chicago possession. Show you a veteran smart player. That time Hanson had a wide open three point shot. The crowd yelling for him to shoot it. He knows he doesn't want to rub any dirt in their face. They got to play the rest of the games. He just backed it out, swung the ball. Standing ovation for the balls who are just running the clock down. With that 122 89 lead. Shot clock. Now to one, Levingston for three, and that will do it. The only consolation, it's a 33-point differential, which is two points shy of the largest margin of victory in an NBA Finals game. The Bulls take game one, led by Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. They do it 122-89. We'll be back in a moment. Chicago Bulls defeating the Portland Trailblazers in a rough 122-89. Michael Jordan, 39 points, an NBA Finals game record 35 in the first half. Let's go to Ahmad, who has Michael Jordan alongside him. All right, thanks, Mark. Michael, if you guys were trying to come out here and make a statement this evening, I'd say you did it with an exclamation point. Well, I don't think you can make a statement in the finals. I mean, this is just one game, and one game doesn't make a final. But uh, we wanted to get out of the block quick. We got to defend our home court, you know, because we got three games out there. So that can make a big difference if they come in and get one. What about you in the first half? You shot six three-pointers, set of the league record. You were in a zone. I was in a zone. My threes felt like free throws, man. I, I really didn't know what I was doing, but I was taking them, and they was going in. So, you know, that really helped the game. Must have been the working out we did this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, congratulations, Mike. Back to you, Marv. Yes, uh, that was it. The fine work uh, done by Ahmad with uh, Michael. And here is Michael after hitting a three pointer, looking over at uh, you, Magic, and giving the indication that he is bewildered by that hot shooting 